Pro Webinar. My name is Andres Dorot, I'm the Cloud Flow Coordinator. Um, before talking about Cloud Flow, I would actually like to spend uh, two or three minutes on the so-called I4MS initiative under which Cloud Flow is running. The I4MS initiative was um, yeah, created by the European Commission. Uh, it's an initiative that uh, is the container, the umbrella of the seed of the seven projects, um, of which Cloudflow is one. There are three projects in the area of HPC, cloud computing, um, are simulation oriented. And there are projects in the area of uh, laser-based manufacturing and robotics. And for the three HPC cloud-oriented projects, the idea of the European Commission was and still is um, to bring more and more engineering software services to the cloud so that uh, small and medium-sized enterprises can more easily access those services and afford them instead of buying expensive licenses and even more expensive HPC hardware, the idea is to rent um, software as needed on demand on a pay-per-use basis or with other mm, business models that can also be explored during the course of such a project. So the European Commission wanted to give more companies access to cloud-based services. And it's not only a project for end users, it's also a project for software vendors to bring their services to the cloud and to experiment with new services. That holds true for all the three projects, which are named Fortissimo, Cloud SME, and Cloud Flow. As far as I know, Cloud SME and Fortissimo, they do not have any open calls anymore. Cloud Flow is now having the first open call, we'll come to this later, and we are going to have a second one mid next year. Okay, before talking about the open calls, let me talk about Cloud Flow. Cloudflow, computational cloud services and workflows for agile engineering. So our idea was to combine cloud computing with workflow support in the engineering domain. So covering the CAX, the computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing, computer-aided engineering, stages of the design process and bring those two things together as cloud services where engineers can combine different services, different simulation tools, um, design and manufacturing um, software to support their workflow. And there is one big difference if you compare Cloud flow with Fortissimo, for instance, we start uh, started with one end user. In our case, the end user is um, a company in the area of water turbine maintenance repair and overall. They're called Delba Hydro. And um, we have looked for, for an end user um, where we can address. Uh, at least some of the stages in the workflow from designing new turbines to simulating them on the level of CFB, on the level of the mechatronic system, and even the machining, and where we can then also do some quality assurance um, services to compare the CAT model with the scanned physical uh, product. And, and of course, trying to manage all this data. 
So initially, we have been looking for one end user with a representative workflow where we can um, experiment with in, in our infrastructure. That does not mean that we are limited to this one end user for the future. That is something uh, where the open call comes into play, and uh, I will explain this later on. So typically, it's not a um, sequential process. Workflows many times imply circles and cycles. So you go back and forth with the data. You go from the simulation results back to the CAD in case you need to make a, cha a change, etc. And so we try to bring different data into a cloud-based CLM system as well, which is based on standards. In this case, it's that of the QMR. Well, why did um, Selva decide to, uh, yeah, to, to, to come into the project as, as one of the initial partners? They would like to use cloud-based engineering software functionality for developing um, you know, better products, um, decreasing the time to market, and, and uh, render their development process more cost-efficient by leveraging a resources. Um, so everybody involved in simulation knows that uh, simulation takes a lot of time. And you typically need big machines uh, to perform well-demanding simulations, such as DSD or, or even variant in DSD. And also FDM, I mean, that's, that's uh, kind of cool as well for FDM. So if you have an HPC machine, what can you do? Well, you can um, play with the um, complexity of your simulation, bringing more physical uh, effects into the simulation, or you can uh, increase the resolution of your simulation either in terms of space or in terms of time, meaning you, you take more um, finite elements or you do a transient simulation or, well, other things that, that, that in essence you may not be able to do on a, on a regular basis. Or may also not need on a regular basis, but for some demanding new products, uh, it, it can be really, really um, well, yeah, interesting and, and insightful um, to have these better simulations. So um, what is Cloudflow doing? Um, we are developing an infrastructure that is new and, and, and open for engineering services to be, well, locked in, if you like, um, supporting end users, uh, trying to give them easy access to HPC resources, increase the affordability of using such types of, of, of software systems, being at simulation services, CAD CAM, or, or other stuff, as we have seen, and also trying to um, to experiment with new business models. That's very interesting, I think, to have a platform here to gather data and then um, see which kind of business model is really, I mean, also economically um, interesting and, and, and feasible from the end user perspective, but also from the software vendor perspective. So we are currently running six so-called internal experiments. This is our first group of experiments. And as I've mentioned before, we have two open calls where we are calling for seven new experiments each. Let's have a small look into the six experiments that are currently underway. More detailed descriptions you'll find on our webpage. So we are running an experiment in the field of computer-aided design in the field of computer-aided manufacturing, in CFD, in project lifecycle management, means data management for engineering processes, 
in systems simulation, where different disciplines are coming together, and uh, in the area of quality assurance, QA, where we compare point clouds that are coming from a digitized, scanned, real turbine, a physical one, um, and compare them with the um, CAT model, and then see how yeah, how, how good actually uh, the manufacturing process was in comparison to the original CAD model. I don't want to go into the details of each of the experiments, but I'd like to stress uh, some of the uh, system vendors perspective to it for three of them. So one experiment here, CAD on the cloud, uh, that is led by Missler. Um, they, they are the developers of the CAD software Top Solid that some of you may know. And what, what they are doing in this experiment is basically um, developing an add-on for their CAD software, which is especially tailored for the design of these turbine blades. And this piece of software is provided as a cloud service. Mm. And their motivation for doing that is to provide such, such a component on a pay-per-use concept or on a monthly uh, leasing fee to a, wider, uh, to a wider audience, to a wider customer base. So um, that is not the classical simulation on the HPC scenario here, but here a piece of software, in this case actually a library, comes from the cloud directly to the local installation of the CAD system and provides functionality for the end user, which brings down the typical, well, development time and the time required for, for basic interactions. Uh, from from hours to minutes, so uh, that's just pretty uh, worth worthwhile for the end. And and of course we we think as well for for the vendor to uh, to address a broader base. The second experiment is more the classical uh, HPC scenario. We have an HPC cluster at back end, and uh, we want to run different CFD simulations with different parameters for the blades. So it's thousands or hundreds or even thousands of, of simulations that have to be uh, calculated in, in parallel to then make a design decision what is the best solution uh, for this blade under the given boundary conditions. So that's more like yeah, what, what you may expect from a project under uh, the title HPC services in the cloud. And uh, this is one example for, for a CFD simulation and the open calls are open for additional kinds of, of these more classical uh, scenarios where you have a simulation kernel on an HPC cluster and you'd like to provide this as a service to more customers or to new customers. <laughs> And the third one is an experiment uh, led by ITI. Um, uh, it is in the area of system simulation, meaning a uh, mechatronic system. This is, this is typically a 1D simulation here, but it contains multi-physics. So some hydraulics, some uh, electronic uh, control units, uh, schema, etc., etc. It is based, so the model is based on the modeling language Modelica. And here the question is also, can we use a cluster of, uh, of compute nodes to run parallel simulations uh, studying the effect of varying parameters to the performance of the overall system? And, and that is also say, the basis for, for an optimization or for an automatic optimization. Um, so the idea is here to launch many computations in parallel on the HPC infrastructure. Um, 
Well, so for, for ICI, this is a step into, into the cloud providing these kinds of services based on uh, functional mock-up interfaces to, uh, to customers. And uh, this is a kind of a, a third facet. Uh, here, the single simulation doesn't take hours necessarily, but if you run this, if you run many in parallel to study variations of, para of parameters, you can again benefit from an HPC infrastructure. Okay, um, there are three more that I didn't mention yet uh, in detail. It's computer-aided machining, again, simulation on the HPC cloud to calculate more rapidly the passes of the tool. Then we have the PLM for all the data management and data sharing, also across companies possibly in the future. And then we have this experiment where we compare scans data with the original um, as designed CAD model. Okay, so on this slide you see um, the whole uh, consortium partners and the other consortium partners. I have shown you some of the commercial partners that are providing software. In addition to this, we have uh, three research groups that are working on the cloud for infrastructure, which is DFKI, Syntec, and Fraunhofer. We have the University of Nottingham, which is complementing the experiments with their methodological approach in evaluating the experiment, um, collecting user requirements, structuring them, prioritizing them, and they will also play a role in the open call experiment. Then we have CASA working on business models, also consulting possibly new partners um, what kind of business models to experiment with and discussing with you. And last but not least, Arctur, our HPC provider um, that, that, that has an HPC infrastructure that can be used in uh, the external experiments or in the new ones, but you can also bring your own HPC provider if you want. So the cloud for infrastructure is designed to be open towards different um, HPC infrastructures, providers, but also towards uh, possibly different cloud software stacks. That was one of the design, um, design goals of, of our infrastructure, using as much as possible existing standards. Well, let's now come to the open call. Um, we're talking about the first one. We opened end of uh, June, and the call is closing end of September, so in around about four weeks. And there is a second one uh, in one year from now, so we may have a, a webinar next year as well. Um, here you see also the three waves of experiments. The first one is the internal that we are actually running. The second wave here is the one that will handle the seven experiments selected from the first call. And those experiments are supposed to start in January 2015. So when you hand in your proposal by end of September, we will have three months to evaluate the proposals, um, to negotiate with you, and then to contract these external consortia suggesting experiments, suggesting application experiments, and the same one year later. Good. So we are looking for seven new application experiments. An application experiment is not a research project. The idea is that the technology is, is somehow already available, maybe not yet as a cloud service. And then the application experiment can bring the software, can help the vendor to bring the software to the cloud. 
The application experiment is meant also for end users to experiment with such a service for innovative design questions. So they should be rooted all in computational technology for the manufacturing and engineering industries. So we are more looking into services that compute something instead of services that just handle data. These experiments should address workflows along the value chain in one company or even across the boundary of two companies or more. Maybe not too many, but it's a certainly interesting experiment to say, let's try to use cloud services to enable to foster, to strengthen collaboration across companies. And then we'd like to give priority to innovative product development and products that are, for instance, mechatronic that um, require to, to co-stimulate two or more physical domains, or even to cyber physical systems in, in the manufacturing um, area. So how shall consortia look like? We envisage one to four partners. Maybe four is, is not a hard figure here, but one partner is the minimum, of course. And if it's only one partner, then it should be an end user. So an end user is always required with his yeah, problem. He or she wants to have a problem solved that, that, that cannot be solved without this, this, this HPC cloud um, service infrastructure because um, the own hardware resources are, are just not powerful enough. Um, second type of consortium partner is software vendors. Software vendors, such as the ones that I have mentioned, that want to bring new services to the cloud. Then there is the option to bring a new HPC provider and also research institutions that may help along in this process or research institutions that bring a piece of software to this consortia to make a certain workflow yeah, more rapidly happen or more easily happen. And then the whole consortia will be complemented by existing cloud for partners. So each experiment may require some work to be done by the cloud for partners to integrate the experiment in the infrastructure, to adapt the infrastructure to the experiment. And for doing this, the cloud for partners are prepared and have a certain amount of, of in time contribution to your experiment. I've talked about that, so it, we published our call end of June. We will close um, on 13th of September at 5 o'clock. Um, the start date for the experiment will be 1st of January 2015, um, assuming that all the contractual issues will be solved by then. And the first uh, open call is calling for experiments that run over one year. So this year is basically requirement, requirement collection, adapting uh, the software to the infrastructure and vice versa, then actually perform the task with the end user, evaluate it with, uh, in collaboration with the University of Nottingham, and then report on the results of, uh, of the experiment. Each application experiment will receive a, an easy contribution of up to 110, I think we have written in our open call document, 110,000 uh, euros. So if you are an SME, you get 75% funding. Uh, that, that, that means that your overall budget is something like in the area of 114 or 40 or so thousand uh, uh, euros. If you are a bigger company, 
you you have a reduced funding rate of 50 percent. Well, more information on the open call can be found on our webpage. I will go there in a minute and we, we look through the documents because I think it's uh, it's worth doing it together and give you some hints um, what kind of documents we have as information package and how the proposal that you have to write looks like. So there is a short form, it's a one page that gives you all the facts about the open call. Then there is an important document we think it's the guide for applicants. This this document has eight pages, so you can also read it in like half an hour. But here we we summarized or we, you know, we even detailed um, what I was presenting here. We give more explanation, we give more examples, more hints with respect to the allowed consortia um, possibly feasible or unfeasible experiment on the funding scheme, etc. And then we have a proposal template out there uh, together with the evaluation criteria, so you can exactly see what are the criteria and, and what to write in which chapter. The proposals just have 12 pages, so that reflects a little bit also on the amount of money. It's not it's not a big project that you're going to write a proposal of like 100 pages for. It is it is more a focused activity um, to address such such an application experiment. And then for technical um, partners, there is a small technical document that describes a little bit uh, of the infrastructure and what the partners do so far and what the partners can do for you in the future. So Experiment can also create a bridge to existing Cloudflow partners and extend the portfolio of Cloudflow in conjunction with existing experiments. Um, and then your questions are welcome. Please send them to info at eu-cloudflow.eu we try to answer your questions within two or three working days. Um, if you have, there are individual things that, that you like to discuss with us. By the way, we have also a frequently asked question list on our webpage. Okay. Um, before we come to the mission, let's go visit the webpage and the document that I just mentioned. Um, up here, you see the link. It's uh, eu minus cloudflow.eu slash open line of call slash first minus call. And then you will end up here. Um, by the way, here you see uh, the, the video of the first webinar that we have held on 7th of July. So everything that I was saying then you can also replay if you like. Now let's go to the document. So the first one is this one pager. Um, this is the official call. Here you see Cloudflow first call, the project uh, number, then here some figures, um, proposals to be sent in English, the most important links, and the email address to send questions to. Then we have here some expectations for new experiments. What, what do we think? Um, we, we would like to have. And then the full description of the longer document, also a link here. The expected consortia and how proposals are going to be submitted. That is basically it. Um, what did I do? Now I'm lost. Sorry. So let's see cloud flow again. And so you see how how easy it is to upload the pages. Only three clicks. So the guide for applicants, that's the next big thing. This is the eight pager. Other page, not so interesting. Table of content, you need. You see it's eight pages. 
So that's a little bit of an explanation of what CloudSol is, um, what what your options and benefits may be, of what we offer, and then again the most important links to the web. The objectives of the open call to increase the number of partners and to increase the number of experiments to to, to spread out and, and to increase the impact that we have on the European scale. Um, examples, more details in which areas of the design status we can envisage application experiments may happen. It's not a limited list, it's an open list, but it should give you some ideas in which direction to think. Um, the, the different um, areas, branches, manufacturing industries that, that we have in mind. Um, and you see this is, this is a pretty broad coverage uh, from, from automotive uh, to plant design, custom objects, um, even, even production machinery. Then we talk about the characteristics of the application uh, experiment also in terms of the, the innovation character. And then we have brainstormed some application experiments here. Um, also trying to clarify that if it is a, a small consortium with only one partner, for instance, it may still be worthwhile to think about an experiment linking to other existing um, cloud core partners. So here you have like three examples, and we also give examples for experiments that may not be easily feasible. In times you have something similar, please talk to us so that we can try to figure out before the deadline uh, how to shape it so so that the feasibility can feasibility can can be. Improved. Then we're going to talk about the application experiment consortia, the different types, and also what kind of activities we think these types of partners may run. Again, more detail than in my PowerPoint presentation. Uh, we have summarized everything here on the table in the table, sorry, and then we go to the application experiment consortia example. Here we talk about feasible consortia or valid consortia, and we also give you some hints of consortia that we think are non-recommended, are not recommended, and in also in combination of the content of the experiment. So if you are considering sending a proposal, I cannot stress enough, please read these eight pages. We have spent a lot of thought into them to make, yeah, to make your life preparing the proposal as easy as possible. And then this is the more, um, yeah, the more organizational stuff, the rules for the proposal presentation, uh, preparation and, and, and submission. How to submit it to the deadline, as I said, 5 o'clock, Brussels time, September 30. Um, and then how we are going to evaluate and select the proposal or the projects from the proposal. Also explained in here and where to find um, further information. And finally, the details about the funding uh, regulation. Please keep in mind, this is an FT7 project. We have been funded in the last call of FT7. So the old FT7 rules apply, not the new Horizon 2020 ones. That was the guide for applicants. As I said, eight pages, very recommended to read that. Um, let's go to the proposal template. So if you read how if you read about the house, then the question is what to fill in. So that's our proposal template. Cover page is uh, the number of partners. Maybe wor worth 
no thing here is the fix. This is your identifier that you get from the European Commission if you, if you have already been a partner in European projects. Then please indicate the organization type, end user or software vendor. If you are an SME or not, and if you are an SME, then try as soon as possible, if you don't have it yet, to get your SME status confirmed by the European Commission. Only a confirmed SME status will guarantee you the 75% funding rate. Here again, the table of content. You see for each of the sections, we have indicated the amount of text that we are going to expect. So we start with the industrial relevance, it's maximum one page. We have indicated what we want to read here by guiding questions. I think if you fill these questions, um, it's easy for you and it's easy for us, and it's easy for the reviewers to really see how well you are addressing the things that are also uh, the criteria for the reviewers to evaluate your proposal. You, you need to have an industrial relevance, so it has, has to be an end user problem which is being solved here. It cannot be only driven from the software vendor perspective. Sometimes the software vendor may initiate the whole process of thinking about the proposal, but then you have to have an end user um, that is running the experiment and gives feedback uh, about uh, the, yeah, the appropriateness of the solution that has been achieved. Then the second section is on the design of the experiment. Why is it designed in a certain way? Which kind of questions do you want to get answers for from the experiment? It's a little bit like in a scientific experiment. I'd like to know something about X. So I, I, I make up my mind to, to to build up an experiment in a certain way to hopefully get these answers. Uh, we would like to read here about who thought, why is this experiment shaped the way it is? Then we go to section three. It's about the technical impact and also the business impact. And, this, and we just have to fill the tables but keep in mind the technical and the business aspects are equally important. So it's not only about technology, it is about the impact on the business side for the end user, for the software vendor, for the HPC center, possibly as well. So it's important to, to talk about both sides of this matter. And, and then here uh, a section on the innovation and the complementarity. So complementarity towards the six already running experiments that you find on the internet. And innovation is what is the innovative aspect for you, for your customer. Um, and, 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 and here you have to explain a little bit why this experiment is, is, is innovative. If if something is run in a, in like a high-end, huge company on a daily basis, it may still be, it may still be very innovative for an SME. So think about it. You don't have to push the state of the art in high-end industry. It has to be innovative for the SME, which is your end user. That, that is the key criteria for a criterion for innovation. Um, so section uh, six is asking about the exploitation strategy, what to do with the results, also after the project, after the experiment, what are your plans to exploit it. I think that's straightforward. And uh, here in section seven, we are expecting to read about the technical approach or how to implement it. Um, and please identify some of your activities in this uh, in this section. Here you have two pages to talk about and to write about your approach. 
and you can introduce the activities that you then list in section eight in the table. So section eight is short, just fill out the tables and you can refer back to what you have described in section seven. Um, please note, we don't talk about work packages and tasks here because your experiment will be one task in our overall or one work package in our overall work package structure. Therefore, we have chosen deliberately the term activity. Milestones and deliverables as usual. And then you need to talk a little bit about the resources that you would want to put into the project and for which you want to get the funding from the European Commission. And if you if you're going to have HPC resources, then of course you need to talk about how much money has to go into the running costs for the HPC for for executing the experiment. Um, and uh, down here we indicate that the in-kind contribution of the cloud flow partners is in the order of forty thousand euros. And finally, please describe the consortium. Um, you have uh, two pages maximum. If you are a small consortium, one half page per partner, then you may not need the full two pages. And this is the annex where you can see the evaluation criteria. So the evaluation criteria, they map one to one with the structure of the document that I think makes all people's lives easier for those that write the proposal, for those that read and evaluate the proposal as well. So it's 10 as there are 10 sections, so 10 criteria. Here we commented what the numbers mean it's all in there in the documents. Um, and then finally, a short template on the, the, the short the document on the technical part of Cloudflow that may be interesting for uh, system vendors especially. Here we talk about the, the infrastructure and all the partners and what they are doing today and what they can provide in the future. So here you get a system architecture overview. It's pretty high level. If you have more detailed questions, questions, please send them to the info email address. Here we explain our terminology. Um, this is how the, the, the components work together and uh, what is required to integrate bits and pieces with our workflow manager. This is an, an important page. We try to put all the things that need to be considered on one page. This is chapter 2.3. So if you don't want to read all the other pages as a system vendor or as a developer, please read 2.3 at least. I think that gives you a good, a good idea of, of what's going on. Uh, then we talk about the hardware layer as provided by R2 if you want to make use of R2 as an HPC provider. And also they are indicated pricing information. It helps you to calculate and also here you have the address of ArcDuer. They are happy and willing to answer your question about uh, pricing for HPC services as well. In chapter four, we give one example for uh, some, some services. And in 4.2, we give one example for one of the existing experiments, together with a flow chart so that you see the interplay of the components. And uh, chapter five is completely dedicated to the partner description, what they do in the experiments, 
and what they can do in the future. So here's the small partner description. What are the experiments that are involved in? What are their contributions? And then here, what you can possibly do with them in the future if you like to, uh, to hook up on existing partners. And this we did for all partners. We start with the uh, commercial ones, but we also talk about the research institutions and what their contribution is and what their interest is for the future. And we also talk about the end user and, of course, our NCP provider. So all 11 partners are covered here. Well, those are all the documents. And then I'd like to come to my last slide. The CloudFlow mission. We try to make cloud infrastructures a practical solution for the manufacturing SMEs. We are not somehow vendor specific. Uh, we want to provide at the end of the project um, a, a, a portal where different tools can be used and different services can be used and of course also be paid uh, in, in combination with each other or on a singular um, basis. Uh, that, that is the, the key driving force behind our project. And so I'd like to thank you. Those are the most important links. And I think we have at least 10 minutes uh, for, for questions. Now, Carmen, can you open the channel so that people can talk and I can hear them? Hello? Yes. Do you hear the people? Uh, no, it looks like uh, no, uh, nobody is talking. But if they will talk, then they we will hear them. Uh, I will see. Uh, something uh, near the in uh, their maybe Nate the icon. can say something. Nate, hello. Can you can you say something? We have to test whether we can hear you. Hello. Okay. But we are giving them the the unmute. They can unmute themselves. Ah, they can unmute themselves. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm able to hear people now. Okay. So the yeah, the floor is yours for questions. Okay, I will start. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, shortly say who you are. Okay. Uh, sorry, there is a lot of noise in my office. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Davide Berselli from uh, Fondazione Demo Center in Modena. Okay. And, uh, well, just a question on the budget. Uh, Stop me if you do not understand me because I have no feedback. Um, you uh, about the budget. Um, I understood that the the budget for the partner already in CloudFlow doesn't need to be inserted in the uh, in the estimated uh, budget for the project, or I have to mention it somewhere. So I have to, to say somewhere. What I what what I want to use from the uh, which pattern I want to involve and for what I guess, but without mentioning the the amount of budget that uh, I ask for doing that job. Exactly. So okay. If you have an idea to whom or with whom you want to collaborate, uh, mm -hmm. send an email to the info email list. Uh, you can you can already discuss certain things before you finalize your proposal. The budget that, that goes to these partners has not to be appear to, to appear in, in your proposal. Um, the figures that we mentioned for the internal support are, are on average figures. 
So they may also vary from experiment to experiment. Uh, and uh, we will we will reflect on the feasibility of the experiments with the partner saying if you would like to do something with I don't know Mishler and Numeka uh, and then Numeka has to agree that this is feasible with the amount of money that that is available for internal partners. Yeah, but you don't have to to discuss this completely before sending in. If you talk to Numeka, that's great. That's fine. It, it, to 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 make sure that 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 yeah that they think uh, the risk is very low. That that this will not will not be possible. Okay. And I have another question, if I can. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And it's about the uh, uh, in the. Um, in your presentation, the first presentation, you mentioned about uh, something about the priority of the of the topics uh, we should uh, uh, apply for in our proposal, and um, it's uh, yeah exactly the, the the one called first open call the the slide. I mean, uh, when you say looking for seven new application experiments. Yeah. And uh, um, the third point, probably you mentioned it, but I was uh, not listening correctly. Uh, when you mentioned that the priority is on innovative product development as, and products uh, such as me mechatronic and cyber physical systems, it means that, uh, okay, you are looking for, especially, can you give me some examples? Probably you did, but I was uh, no, not listening correctly. Well, I mean, many mod modern products are, are mechatronic. Um, even even the the, the the turbines that that we that we do in the internal experiment, they, they of course they are mechatronic. So you have uh, you have uh, tiltable turbine blades. So you can you can change the angle, so to say. And and, and this is a system uh, that that has also active elements. So I mean, many products. Are, are mechatronic today uh, from from the coffee machine on it, it, okay but in terms of simulation it means that you are expecting proposal that simulate also uh, the the different way of uh, so the the simulate also the electronic part i mean because uh, in, in my head i can understand easily the gfd simulation the mechanical properties of a product and so on but if I want to simulate a mechatronic system, it means that you are waiting for um, for for me to ask some simulation about the how a complete mechatronic system works. Okay. So, um, so we, we 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 have not been that uh, that strict that we say we will only accept proposals that simulate the full mechatronic system. We we want to have. Um, experiments that simulate, let's say, at least single domains of a mechatronic system. That 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 is something that we will give priority for. Okay. I mean, if you can't, let let let's be very very let's say crude. If you say you would like to to uh, to develop a new hammer, I mean that's a that's a simple piece of mechanics. Yeah, uh, this is certainly not an innovative product. Uh, product. Uh, in, in, if you look a little bit also into the experiments that they run, for instance, in Fortissimo, they do CFD for airplanes. They they do a lot of other things. They do simulation of uh, of plants, you know, event-driven simulation. Um, the, the 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 machines on the shop floor they are typically also mechatronic systems. Uh, so yes, I mean, in case that we will get ten great proposals that want to do the overall mechatronic system, we, we may that we, we may give priority to them, but I okay. I don't think that this will happen. Okay. Thank you, Pierre. Yeah, you're welcome. So here's AK one from Elton Germany. Yeah, hello. Can you hear? Yes. So I have a very short question. What will be the result after project? It will be a cloud portal or what what else? I have not understood you completely. What is the result of after the project of whom? Yeah, what? after this project, what will be, what will be available? It will, there will be a 
how the portal commercial available for the for the partner or the what, what will be the product after this yeah. project? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So the the, the product is envisaged as uh, a piece of it being a portal where these services that 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 come into the experiment can be further used. Um, Arctour, our HPC partner is interested in, uh, in in running these services also beyond the lifetime of the project. They are at the moment the main exploitation partner of the overall infrastructure. Um, but as I said, if in, an, in, in another experiment, another HPC service come into play, they may also be interested to run these services, or, or at least partially. So, who, who who will be the owner of this portal? The, the portal is something that is co-developed in the project, and that 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 is that is still I mean that is true and that will be still true for after the project. And the idea is that Arctur is providing this as a service and as a front end uh, to the community. The the the, uh, the portal is in any case it is a foreground development in the project. So the portal development has started in the project. So all the partners contributing to the portal are partial on, uh, owners. So the project partner will be the the sure. owner of this portal or not? Then you are owner of your services that you provide to the portal. The portal is calling your service. There is not a, a hard-coded link between them. Who will be the portal provider? The portal provider. What yeah. is a portal provider? A portal? Running the portal. Running, who is running the portal? Yeah, but running the portal. I, I, I mean, the portal has an address. It's a web page, and then. On the server side, there are the services. Yeah, if, the, uh, if we are the service provider, we use this portal. Can you repeat? If we are the if, if we are the cloud service provider, and it, yeah. if we can use this portal. Yeah, sure. Then, if you come with a customer for one experiment, yes. you could yes. you could integrate this experiment into the portal. You can provide this portal, or you can do your own small portal if you like, and uh, and uh, yeah, exploit it yourself. That that's part of your strategy that we would like to read under the under your exploitation strategy. And you you may have a portal. I I don't know about all the current status of uh, of your cloud initiatives at the moment. But we can also discuss this by phone if you if you want to. Have okay, more. I will call you for detail. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Okay, are there more questions? No, no further questions. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Thank you all for listening.